Hello, I'm Dave Koji, and welcome to the Pickleball Lounge, where I speak to influential members of the pickleball community about their involvement and experience on and off the pickleball court. Before we begin, I would like to thank Astria Pickleball for sponsoring this episode. Head over to astriapickleball.com for their innovative paddles and gear. Today's special guest is Alex Spancake. Alex is the founder of Pickle Mart, which you can find at www dot p-k-l-m-a-r-t dot com. We'll be getting into this exciting journey Alex is taking and why this is going to be huge for pickleball. But before we get started, a little bit about Alex. He's originally from North Carolina and has been living in D.C. for the past six years. He started playing about two and a half years ago, and he's currently playing at a 5.0 doubles and singles. And just real quick, that is amazing. A small percentage of players have reached that level. So that's awesome. Um, he spent his career in data and analytics, so he definitely knows what he's talking about. Alex, great to have you. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. I, I Sometimes I know what I'm talking about. Other times I'm making it up on the fly, but <laughs> appreciate the kind intro. <laughs> hey, good, glad to have you. So uh, right after the gate, for people who have not heard of Pickle Mart, what is Pickle Mart? Yeah, so Pickle Mart is uh, an attempt to bring the world of analytics into the sport that we all love. Uh, the goal being uh, to use data to A, help players, coaches, anyone improve their game, uh, and also to start evaluating strategy uh, there are a lot of claims that are made about what people should or should not be doing. Uh, and I, I imagine in a lot of cases they're right. Uh, but in a lot of cases, like maybe the data doesn't support their argument. Uh, and so the Pickle Mart, right, aggregating a bunch of data from, you know, 3 0 matches, pro matches, you name it, uh, and just trying to help the community. So essentially, it takes kind of the guesswork, uh, your maybe personal biases, uh, subjectivity, and it really boils it down to pure facts, um, pure um, objectivity, because if you're thinking that, hey, this shot's really great for me, or, or I'm doing well this shot, or not doing well this shot, this software can say, hey, you, you may be wrong, and this is what you have to look at. Yeah, no, exactly. There are a lot of decisions that are made even within a single rally. Uh, and oftentimes, what you think is the best play, uh, you know, may or may not be the best play, right? And it's like, you know, let's talk about like where you're hitting your return, who's taking your third, what kind of third, when to speed up, when to sit back and dink. Like these are all conscious decisions that players are making, uh, and we want to help them make like the most optimal decision. Yeah. So could this Let's say that I'm a player. I'm looking to get better, right? I go to picklemar.com. Uh, I've, 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 I set up my match. I go through the procedure. I evaluate it. Um, I could, I could tell that. Look, um, you know, I'm only making, I'm only hitting my my third shot dry forty percent of the time, but I'm making my my third shot drop seventy uh, percent of the time, right? Um, th are those types of the things that I can I can extract from from the data? Uh, certainly, yep. Uh, to add on to that, I would also say there is a lot of nuance around uh, these kind of things. Like, for example, I know a lot of people will hit their drive when they're in better position, right? Uh, and so, just because your your third shot drive is leading to more rallies won doesn't necessarily mean it's always the better shot. Uh, and the kind of match reports that we're spitting out are trying to provide uh, a very objective view of what has happened and allow the user to like, you know, infer, okay, this is what I should be doing. Um, you know, something we've added to all these reports that we'll, we'll go to through in a bit is like the ability to rewatch any shot. So like, yes. if you want to look at your drives and see exactly what's happening, and I know coaches love this kind of thing, like just go to the video and watch in slow motion. Start breaking down the mechanics. You know, stats can guide decision making, uh, but at the end of the day, like the players, the pros, coaches, like have the really granular insight, uh, and data is helping just enable that. 
Yeah, for sure. And I, I think, you know, we're talking about it from an inward coaching perspective, but I, I think Alex, you would agree that, look, um, I'm playing, I'm, I'm, I'm a pro player. I'm playing this guy or gal again. I'm going to look back about our previous match and see where they weren't being successful, where, what shots I was hitting for which they struggled with, or should I go to that backhand more? You know, I think that could help a pro as well. 100%. I, I know even uh, some of the local competition that I have up here in DC, uh, there's one individual I'm thinking of specifically who has the most consistent third shot and people keep hitting him. <laughs> like they, they hit the return right to him. I'm like, all right, this is like an easy decision. Like just don't like the more thirds you let him hit, like the better chances you have to lose like he's going to hit that third shot drop consistently and with high quality and like that's that's a decision that can you know that can swing a match man even if that's only two or three points that's pretty big yeah and i could definitely see this for um coaches for sure but those average players uh, like myself 3.5 to 4.0 range average players um who who want to get better and i personally practice in my basement um just working on dinks you know and and this is a good opportunity to see okay um where where am i doing the best at and where are where are my areas of improvement it's almost like you're going through like a SWOT analysis of your own game with this program <clears throat> and so you have to ask where did where did pick picklemore originate from how does idea come to you yeah i i think the, <laughs> this is like a really dumb reason for the pickle mark to started, <laughs> but uh I watch a lot of pro pickleball, like I assume a lot of people watching the show yeah. probably do. Uh, and there are a lot of claims being made, especially around timeouts. And I got really fed up with it. You know, I don't I don't necessarily believe that timeouts don't do anything, but I've never seen data to support that they actually help momentum or that momentum's even a thing. You know, I was like thinking of uh, any NBA fans out there probably are aware of like the hot hand theory where like, yeah. you know, a guy makes three shots, like probability of him making the fourth one. Does it change at all? Uh, data generally suggests no. <laughs> yeah. uh, so anyways, I wanted to evaluate that kind of question. So I started, you know, collecting data from pickleball matches. Uh, I slowly realized that data collection is hard and tedious, especially if you want rich and quality data. Uh, so, you know, started working on, uh, an app to help that collection process. Uh, we've kind of iterated and, you know, I'm working with a couple of folks now, one of them's like a front end developer. Uh, so we kind of revamped that app, started collecting more and more data. Um, so anyways, that, that, that's kind of like where the pickle mark yeah. started. Uh, it definitely did not start with a vision of creating mesh reports and looking at shot level data in mind, but alas, here we are. You know, it's interesting about the high hand. So um, just a ga gambling tip for folks, if you're playing roulette and it's hit black five times in a row, that does not mean the sixth time will also be black, right? So um, it's a very important point you're making about the high hand theory. Um, you know, that makes a lot of sense. And, you know, ideas and innovation comes from um, odd places and odd directions and journeys. So whatever you did to get here, uh, welcome. It is a, uh, a great thing. Uh, oh, so well, why should people care about uh, Pickle Mart? Uh, so if people care about their own game, uh, they should always, in my opinion, uh, be looking to see what they could be doing better. And I think the Pickle Mart is a great way to identify like strengths, weaknesses, et cetera, like we mentioned. Um, I would also say fans of the game, like for example, a lot of people love baseball, not because of the actual actions or the sport itself, but because of the numbers behind it. Uh, and while pickleball isn't like, the sport itself isn't situated in a way that can be broken down into individual actions as well as baseball, like baseball's major stats. I think it's still pretty like, it lends itself to statistics. Uh, so I think there's a lot of people out there that are just interested in that kind of stuff. I, I would agree. I mean, I collected baseball cards when I was growing up and I love turning the, turning it over 
And it wasn't just a baseball card, nothing on the back. You had the stats. One of the fun things about the baseball card or whatever was the stats, the year over year stats, hits, strikeouts, all those different things um, that makes it really fun. And I think to your point, um, I think it's really, really fun to dig into the details, especially if you're passionate about the sport and you want to learn more, you want to get more out of it just by just instead of just watching it. So that's a really good um, thing to do. So at this point, how is the platform going for you? Is it is it evolving in the way that you you thought it would be? I don't know if I had an idea in mind. It is certainly evolving. Uh, and, you know, the more that we talk with other players, uh, you know, and when I say players, I mean like your average Joe who shows up at the local courts all the way to pros, like everyone has feedback and has different visuals and stats that they want to see. Um, which is to say, we take that feedback and we're trying to incorporate it to the best of our ability. So it's definitely evolving every day. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's great. You know, that's what we want to hear and see. And you know, we're we're going to shortly. Uh, Alex is going to take us on a little bit of a journey and a visual journey of showing the platform. But I do have to ask first: is that you know, this is not just for the pro, right, Alex? Anyone can go and sign up to be on your platform and use it, um, you know, today. Yeah, no, I, I would love anyone who has any footage of themselves or wants to analyze footage of others. I would absolutely love for them to try the platform out. Uh, you know, this all started as a pet project and it still is right now. You know, what I love to spend every day working on this project, like as a job, yeah, for sure. But like, there isn't even a sign up process right now. Like, you can just go to the tool and use it for free, uh, which I actually think is like kind of a rare thing. So I, I would encourage folks to do that. Yeah, that was my next question. Does the platform cost you any money? But obviously you said no. Uh, yeah, right Right now our overhead costs uh pretty low, pretty minimal. Try to use uh, <laughs> the free tier on um, Amazon Web Services to, to host everything. Yeah. Uh, I mean, definitely a lot of labor has been put into it for sure. sure. Um, but yeah, it's cur okay. currently a disparate. All right. Well, let's get to the exciting part where people want to see is you showing us your screen, take it to the platform and just seeing how it works. Sure. Yeah. Let me uh, go ahead and share my screen here. And I'm just going to turn to my uh, bigger monitor here. All right. Let me know when you can see it. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So we're going to work backwards here um starting with here is a report that was produced from a match um just so people can get a sense of what the output looks like and then we'll go into how the data is collected so this was a report let me zoom in here so make sure people can see um from a recent PPA finals, it was the mixed finals between Catherine and James when they played against Lauren and Julian. Um, you know, it was like a, it was a four set match. So like, obviously longer matches you get more data and you can probably glean more from it. Uh, and the report itself is broken apart into four sections. Uh, the first, this match summary is just to allow users to get a feel for what the match was like. Um, I would say the actionable analysis uh, is found in kind of the bottom three sections. So we'll get there in a bit. Okay. Um, rally lengths, yeah, how long are the rallies lasting? I can tell you 9.1 is like pretty average for pro matches. Maybe slightly on the shorter side, actually. Um, people really like this player impact graphic. Uh, and what it's showing is it's, it's, it's trying to quantify the net impact that each player had on the match. Uh, and so if a player gets more balls, their impact is generally going to be higher. Uh, the actual formula, and you can see here in this case, like both the, the woman uh, had the higher impact for their team, um, probably because they were hitting significantly <laughs> more balls. Yeah. Um, right. But there's a formula that goes into this and it considers, you know, errors, unreturned shots, which include winners. Um, how many balls each player hit in each rally, et cetera. Um, I, I like that you have 
the little key down there to explain what each of the headers mean unreturned assist you know you get a lot of programs where I think the developer forgets that this this needs to be for human consumption and not everyone knows what you're thinking when you're developing it so it's really great that you have that key there so people are understanding exactly what those numbers mean yeah I appreciate it you know I think more documentation around what all these metrics mean is something that we're definitely trying to add to this report um what else am I say here uh oh yeah I can see it's broken apart by game so if you want to get a sense for like how the match progressed and flowed you know uh looks like uh <laughs> certain players definitely had better games uh you know, like, <laughs> like here you see Lauren really really climbed in game three which tracks they, they ended up winning that game um okay. yep and so these are all aggregate numbers uh but if you want to see like at any point in the match so at this point in the match Catherine had hit whatever uh you know 24 unreturned balls uh 15 assists so she set her partner up 15 times and had made 10 errors up to this point honestly she played a really clean match which we're going to see in the analysis um the shot heat map Again, just getting a sense for what the match was like. In mixed matches, especially when you have four righties, this is a pretty common heat map where you see a lot of balls going from the right side to the right side. Um, oh, interestingly enough, you can get a sense that like Catherine was probably hitting a lot more thirds than James in this case. Right. Yeah. So that that that's the point of impact, not the where the ball landed. Good call. Correct. Right. Okay, so if if I'm looking at this, if I was looking at this from a TV top down view, James and Parento are hitting down essentially to the other court, and that's where they're striking the ball. Okay, gotcha. Yep, exactly. Yep. Um, and a cool feature on any of these graphics, you know, we'll go down. There are more heat maps. We'll get into them in a bit. Um, but like, if you're like, wow, what was this ball out here? You can click it, and I guarantee you. Yeah, some ads gonna play that's fine um <laughs> part of the game <laughs> yeah ah, well, what a player but you'll be able to actually rewatch the shot I, that's what i love about this is you're not having to guess what that shot was you can have instant access to the actual video footage to see what it was oh yeah oh yeah like yeah he's way out here <laughs> yeah <laughs> that, that's the shot we're talking about yeah cool all right let's get back to the report here we go um and again just getting a sense for what the match was like in this case about a, over a quarter of the balls were dinking about a quarter were in the transition zone uh i'd say most matches that i've looked at at least at the 5-0 pro level the majority of shots are in the transition zone which oh. i think is something that people don't realize or practice enough that's a really great point. No, they're, they're thinking return and then baseline and kitchen line. <laughs> yep. Which which are important, sure. Yeah, right. right. All right. So now these next sections, we're going to get into the third shots. Uh, these are where I think people can really learn uh, and try and improve their game. So we're just going to get a sense here. Yep. Catherine took a lot of thirds. She dropped about half and drove about half. Wow. Yep. And so let's take a look at like how it fared for her. So here we go. Player Catherine. She had 27 drops. She didn't miss a single one. Wow. It won 52% of the rallies when she dropped, which when you consider that the serving team only wins like 40% of rallies, that is uh 52% is pretty darn good. And when she hit a drop, uh, they got into the dink rally like 70% of the time. Like, that is a crazy high stat right there. Yeah. Like if you told me that any rally that my team is serving, we're going to get to the kitchen line 70% of the time, I would be thrilled. Agreed. Wow. Yeah. And so like, if we wanted to see how or where she's seeing her drops, let's take a look. So everything in blue is a third shot drop. Everything in orange is a third shot drive. Yep, she's playing the right side the whole game. Uh, and it looks like 
her drops, she almost always went cross court, uh, which, I mean, going over the low part of the net, giving yourself more room. I think that makes sense intuitively. Um, her drives, she definitely took more down the line. That uh, is fascinating. I mean, it's it's polarizing to some degree, what she did. And, you know, and that, and that it gives you, and if you look at conversely, James, he mixed it up. <laughs> I mean, he, and he didn't go, he just went to the same spot. So if I'm doing player analysis and I have, you know, I don't know, 10 matches of Catherine and 10 matches of James, are they doing the same thing? And now as an opponent, I'm like, okay, I kind of know where to position myself. I know where I need to kind of lean a little bit and where they're going to go. This is fascinating. Oh, yeah. Like, if I'm playing against James in this match and I see him hit a third, there is, like, no reason why this left side player should not scoot over. Right. Because, like, you're you're not going to get beat here. Uh, what's really funny about this graphic, actually, is, like, I generally understand the strategy of hitting all, like, every ball to the weaker player, which in this case was probably Lauren. Now I'm not uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But for, like, a good amount of, like, Lauren actually... It's, Stayed on the left a decent amount in this match. And James is kind of like brain dead, still went to the right, <laughs> the right spot. <laughs> oh, uh, I don't know if it was intentional or not. But... <laughs> uh, yeah, so again, if you wanted to watch one of these, you just go here. And you can see Catherine hit a pretty high quality. Yeah, I mean, that one's actually all right. You know what's good about going having this direct link back to the video is that these live streams are very long, and trying to find it just to find it would be would take you probably an hour <laughs> just to find a shot you're looking at. So, that's oh, hundred percent. Yeah, let's get back. All right. Um. All right. And again, you can see everyone else's third shot performance. Um, Catherine, both on her drives and drops, was really clean this game. Yeah. Yep. All right. Now we move into the kitchen rally, uh, which, you know, when you're there, the game's completely different. You're dinking, you're speeding up, uh, and you have the choice whether you want to dink or speed up. So let's take a look at everyone's dinking performance. All we're doing is looking at the number of dinks they hit. We're identifying when they made an error. Uh, so it looks like Julian was like pretty error prone in this match. Um, for him, we could go to this graphic and you can see where they hit their dink, where it landed, or actually where contact was made on the next ball. Um, and every dot in red indicates where an error was made. So like mm -hmm. if I'm a coach, and I'm like, all right, let's break down your mechanics. Really easy to just go and click on all these errors. Like, here we go. Oh, that was actually speed up right there. Yeah. Um, but the point stands. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, you also get a sense of where people are hitting them in terms of like cross court or down the line. Uh, I'm not sure there's actually too much to take away from this dink direction graphic. Like, I don't know what I would do differently if I knew my opponent was going down the line a lot, except maybe being more aware of trying to earn a ball. Yeah. That makes sense. Cool. Uh, all right. Now everyone's favorite stat, <laughs> uh, speed ups. I feel like people love looking at speed up performance. Um, here's what we got. All right, for each player, how many dinks and speed ups did you hit? And of that, like, mm. what percentage were speed ups? So, is, how aggressive were you at the kitchen line? Like, James pulled the trigger a lot. Wow. Catherine was a little more happy to dink, right? I'm not saying one's better or worse. That's what happened. Um, when they did pull the trigger, how often did they win the hand battle? In the case of Catherine and James, they won two wow. thirds of them yeah uh, sometimes you speed it up so when resets and you get back into the dink rally right that's what neutralized is gotcha so not good or bad you know um 
And then if you end up losing the hand battle, that's what the slide to loss is right here. Um, so in this case, like the aggressors generally fared pretty well. Yeah. Like even when Lauren sped up, sure, she didn't win the majority of the time, but she only lost one quarter of the time. So like if I'm Lauren, I am not too discouraged from how I sped the ball up this match. Conversely, if you're Julian, you maybe are a little bit disappointed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For him, I'd, I'd want to like do, I'd probably want to look at the examples where, I mean, he only sped it up 13 times, which is not a ton. It's pretty low sample size. Uh, but yeah, like half the time, it did not work out for him. So if we wanted to, we could go to this little graphic. Red are all the speed ups he hit that where they lost. Uh, you know, blue is where they won. Um, Oh my God, look at Catherine's. Just win, 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 win. Um, <laughs> yes. like if, I'm, if I'm Julian, I'm like, all right, let's take a look at what actually happened. Like, you know, you can go through all of these, but like, let's see what happened here. Oh, and add, all right. Well, that's, uh, that's just annoying. Anyways, you could go in and watch all the speed ups that worked yeah, and which yeah. ones did not. Yeah. yeah. Um, actually pretty interesting that Lauren like didn't take a ton of her speed ups down the line. She just kind of went at what I would assume is the right hit. Uh, of James here. Yeah. 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 In that area. Yeah. Hmm. This is really helpful. I like the visuals. It, the, the, the numbers and the visuals together really tie everything together. Yeah, yeah, I know some people like are not. You give them a number, and, you know, they're much more visual learners. <laughs> uh, other I'm people are fine looking at a table. So we're, we're we're just trying to provide something for everyone. Um, yeah, and then this last section is just like people want to know where they're making errors. So here you go. Here is how often everyone made an error. Um, you can uh, when you enter the data, you can classify them as normal errors or unforced errors. It's a little subjective. Um, my opinion is so long as the same person yeah. keeps a consistent definition, like, no, that's as good as you're probably going to get. Um, and again, if you want to watch every error you made, here you go. Right here, every dot is colored by shot type. Uh -huh. so, you know, you got your thirds, your dinks. Oh, that's awesome. Others are usually like hand battles or transition zone shots. Um, it's like in this case, uh, like let's look at Catherine. Like she actually, her only she only missed one ball that was wide or long. Like hmm. everything else was in the net. Um, you can see that Julian actually never missed a shot going back uh, to this corner. Like every error he made, uh, actually maybe one here, but almost yeah. every error he made was going to the right. Why that's the case, I will let him figure out. <laughs> it, it, it's good though. I mean, what what is my mechanics doing that's leading me to those errors? You know, good question to ask to improve your game. Hundred uh, percent. So yeah, that is that's what the match report looks like right now. You know, we're we're working to develop kind of like a, a player profile. So once you get multiple matches reported. Oh. Like, you know, looking at your own stats aggregated across matches. Um, again, something similar for like, if you play with a consistent partner, kind of having like a team report. Uh, so, you know, people have all sorts of team specific questions like, should I be playing the right? Should I be playing the left? Like, all right, let's look over your five matches and see what's working. Yeah. And so one would go in there, they would um, maybe real quick show us kind of, the starting point. So if people were to come to the site, you know, what, what are they doing right out of the gate to uh, begin the process of, of loading their match? Let's say if they want their own match that they filmed, for example. Yep. So we'll work backwards really quickly here. All the matches that have been entered, you can find on the Google Mart website under reports. But to your question on like, how do you even get a report? Um, we have a data entry tool 
which I should be showing you right now. Um, your video of you playing will need to be uploaded to YouTube. And I will preface by saying that right now it's still a fairly manual process and learning to do data entry does take some time, right? It's, there, there's like a good amount of clicking going on. We have made our best effort to make it as intuitive as possible. Um, and so when you come to the site, uh, you'll see instructions, uh, what you should be clicking, uh, et cetera, et cetera. There's even a video tutorial if you're oh, so cool. inclined. Got to remake that one. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is this is the tool. So you'll cool. enter the video URL. It'll pop up here. You'll enter the tournament you're playing in, or it can just be like rec play. Um, each of the players that was involved, and they'll tell you like, all right, whoever the starting server was, enter here. Skill level, you can make your own handle. It doesn't really matter at this point. Um, and I'll give you just a sense of, you know, what I would do if I was entering this example match. Uh, so like, I don't know where the start of the match is. You can see it's slowed down by default. You know, always adjust the playback speed. I've gotten like decently good at doing data entry. Uh, so I can like do it on 0.75 or even one time speed. Um, but if I was recording this rally, I gotta hit begin game. Good reminder. Here we go. So, you know, you can click, you can figure out who hit third, it's a drop. And you're you're basically just clicking around as the rally happens. And there are like specific times when you should left, right click, et cetera, that we don't really need to go into right now. Um, when a rally ends, you can be like, all right, maybe Catherine hit a winner here. I don't know what actually happened. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you'll see that these logs get updated. So you can see like, here are all the shots that were hit that I recorded. Hmm. Uh, you can be like, does that look right? Hmm, actually, uh, that third shot was a drive, so let me update it. Uh, oh, you can go nice. back to like the actual timestamp and be like, all right, uh, let's see, what shot was this? Oh, right, that was it. Um, and you know, if you need to modify the rally, remove a shot, you know, there, there are uh, tools to do that kind of thing. That makes a lot of sense. You know, and, and to your point, it's it's a bit manual, but you know, you're not, you know, this a pickleball match is is not five hours long, right? So yeah. um it it's manageable. Now, you know, is the technology there yet, Alex, to upload a video and the system just does all of it on its own? Is is that is that a future AI thing that's far in advance? Or what are you thinking? That is certainly the dream. Like that is the goal. <laughs> if it was up to me, I would be spending all my time doing analyses. Uh, and you know, like data entry is important, but if you can yeah. automate it, that's awesome. I don't think it's out of the question for the future. Uh, I certainly think even portions of the data entry could be automated through computer vision, like you're alluding to. Um, I think it's going to be a process, though. Uh, yeah. You know, it's one thing to like track where every player is in the court. It's another thing to say, oh, yeah, like that was an unforced error. Right. You know, sometimes, you know, Challenge. sometimes you need the human eye. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, that is that is the dream state. Yeah, I, I think you're you're right. I you you probably figure it out. There's probably some things that can be automated, but there's always going to be that that necessary human involvement, uh, either to audit vet or you know just to make sure that the 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 shot is being called correctly at the end of the day. You know, because it's tough to distinguish between a speed up and a dink sometimes. You know, what I'm saying it's really, those are really tough for a computer to figure out. But um, so uh, I, again, this is at www.pklmart.com. It's yep. free, and you just upload your video to YouTube. Uh, again, if if you wanted to do analysis of a pro game, well, first probably look at the library, make sure it is not already duplicate. 
if you're really interested in, in, a, in a game performance. Um, if it's not there, go ahead and put it on or your own game, you know, mm -hmm. go ahead and upload that and go through the, the tutorial that uh, Alex showed, showed us today. And Alex, kid, if someone has a question or, or an issue, can they, how would they contact you to get some help? Oh, for sure. Uh, two ways. You can either email us at picklemart.analytics at gmail.com. Again, that's P-K-L-M-A-R-T dot analytics. Uh, and then same handle, P-K-L dot, P-K-L mark dot analytics uh, is the Instagram handle. So either way. Awesome. So, and any final words here, Alex, before we wrap up the show? Th thank you again. This is, I think this is amazing. Oh, uh, it's been a pleasure being on. Final words. Um, I would give a big shout out to the Pickle Mart community. Uh, we have a Discord channel if anyone's like really interested in uh, digging into the data or whatever. Um, and, you know, I've met a lot of great folks that way. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with them. So shout out to everyone in the, the Pickle Mart Discord. Uh, shout out to uh, some of my local friends here who have been great in terms of giving feedback. Uh, and it, like, I the idea to record shots and shot location wasn't even my idea. <laughs> so, like, You're not friends. I mean, like, but yeah, I, I have some friends. I have some friends. Uh, yeah, shout out to them as well. And I, I think it's a cool tool because, like, you can have a really shitty video. Yeah. And you can still do data entry on it. Right. Uh, so again, this is trying to, uh, we want to make this accessible to everyone. I just think it has so many applications from a training, from just a, a fan wanting to learn more, so much stuff. So Alex, again, thank you so much for being part of this show. Wish the best of luck and I hope we stay in touch. Yeah, Dave. Awesome being on. All right. Take care. See ya. Bye.